If your app plays audio or video, there's a bunch of new features in Android 11 that will make your users' lives easier, as well as updated libraries which you, the developer, can take advantage of. Let's jump straight in. So I'm really excited about the new media controls in Android 11. On previous versions of Android, media notifications were displayed on top of each other with all the other notifications. With multiple media apps, things could get pretty cluttered. On Android 11, media notifications have been moved next to the quick settings panel and are known as media controls. This is a dedicated, persistent space for controlling media playback. It shows current and recent media sessions in a carousel, and there's even an output switcher so you can easily switch between playback devices. More on this later on. So, as a media app developer, you can support these media controls by creating a media session and using media style for your notification. These APIs have been around since Lollipop, so chances are you're doing this already. To understand exactly how the media controls are created using the notification and media session, let's take a look at some code. First, we create a media session. This is usually done inside a service if your app plays audio in the background. Then, create a media style object and supply your media session token to it. Now, create a notification which is styled by your media style object. By doing this, you've connected your media session to the media controls. You'll also want to specify any actions which your users can perform, such as pausing and skipping to the next track. And this can be done using add action. The media controls have two possible views. The collapsed view is shown on the lock screen and when swiping down from the top of the screen. This can contain up to three actions, and these are specified using set show actions in compact view. The expanded view is shown when the user expands the quick settings area. It can have up to five actions. Once you've posted the notification, all other information is pulled from the media sessions metadata and playback state. First, let's take a look at the metadata. This is set using set metadata and can be constructed using a builder. There are four metadata fields which are displayed in the media controls. These are title, artist, although this could be used for the name of the TV channel or video series. Album art, this could be a screenshot or hero image for video content. And lastly, duration. If the duration isn't set, such as for live broadcasts, then the progress indicator won't be shown on the seek bar. Talking of the seek bar, this is updated from the media sessions playback state in a similar way using set playback state. Position is used to update the elapsed time and the progress bar. Playback speed determines the rate at which the elapsed time changes. Useful when you want to play content faster than normal, like for example, this video. Adding the seek to action indicates that seeking is supported and makes the position marker draggable. If this is not supplied, seek will be disabled, but progress will still be shown. So we've covered creating a media style notification, including specifying the actions which your app supports, setting metadata for the track title and other information, and using playback state to control the seek bar. This is everything you need to know to ensure your media controls look great. So now let's take a look at a related feature of Android 11 called media resumption. This feature allows you to find and resume playback of your TV episode, podcast, or drum and bass set at the exact point you left off, even after you've rebooted your device. It creates media controls for up to five recent media apps and puts them in a carousel below the quick settings area. To support this feature, your app must provide a media browser service. This allows the system to retrieve information about the content which your app recently played. After booting, the system UI will call your media browser services on get root method. Now, usually you'd return the root of your media tree from this method, but the system UI also specifies the extra recent hint. You should treat extra recent as a special case and prepare to resume playback where the user left off. So you should return the root of a media tree that contains the most recently played media item as the first element. The system UI will call your onload children method to obtain this media tree, which is a list of media item objects. For the first playable media item in this list, the system UI will create a static media controls with just a play button. If the user taps the play button, the system UI will make another call to onGetRoot with the extra recent hint. This is so you can prepare your previously paid content as before, just in case anything has changed since the static controls were created. System UI will then connect to your media session 
and issue a play command to it. You should override the media session on play callback in order to start playback of your media content and create your media style notification. Once you post the notification, the static media controls will be swapped with the media controls created from your notification. As well as being able to resume media sessions, Android 11 also allows you to easily transfer playback from one device to another. This is known as seamless media transfer and is done through the output switcher. When you tap on the output switcher, you'll see a list of media routes available to your app. By default, only local media routes are shown, such as the built-in speaker and Bluetooth headphones. If your app supports other media routes, such as remote playback, you'll need to let the system know. And here's how you do that. First, you add the media router jetpack library to your app. Seamless media transfer is supported from 1.2 alpha 02 onwards. Next, add the media transfer receiver class to your Android manifest. Now in your app, obtain the media router singleton, which is an object that maintains the state of all currently available media routes. Create a media route selector and specify the route categories which your app supports. The categories you define here determine the routes which are displayed in the output switcher. Here we'll just specify the remote playback category, which is used for cast devices. If you want to support transfer from remote to local devices, you'll need to explicitly enable this using set transfer to local enabled. We can now use our selector when adding a media router callback. We also supply a callback object so we can be informed of changes to media routes. Here's the callback class. The method we overwrite is on route selected, which will be called whenever a new media route has been selected. When this happens, we need to take into account the reason why it was selected. If the existing route was disconnected, for example, Bluetooth headphones were switched off, we should pause or stop playback. If the route was actively changed, for example, when switching from a phone to a cast device, then we should continue playing the media from its previous playback position. This is the seamless part of seamless media transfer. To get started testing your app with these new media features, download the latest Android 11 beta. Media controls are supported from beta 2.5 onwards. You can test your media browser service implementation using the Media Controller test app. Lastly, the Universal Android Music Player, or UAMP for short, contains a reference implementation for these new features. It's the canonical code sample for many of the media APIs and uses ExoPlayer under the hood. It's also been recently updated to support playback through cast devices. Check it out on GitHub. Right, let's talk about media streaming and 5G. When streaming media over a network, it's important to be aware of whether that network is metered. This can help you decide which media streams are most appropriate to serve to the user. Historically, the meteredness of a network has been constant, so you only needed to detect this once per connection. With 5G networks, however, the meteredness of a network can change whilst the connection is still active. Essentially, meteredness becomes dynamic. For this reason, Android 11 introduced a new network capabilities constant called temporarily not metered. This indicates that a usually metered network is temporarily unmetered. To handle meteredness changes in your app, you should first obtain a reference to connectivity manager. Then register a network callback and override the on capabilities changed method. This is called as soon as you register the callback so you can detect the current capabilities of the network. If the network has either the temporarily not metered or not metered capability, you know it's unmetered and opens up the possibility to serve higher bitrate content, depending on bandwidth. Just remember to serve more conservative streams when the user's back on a metered network. Now let's talk about updates to media APIs and libraries. From NDK21, OpenSLES is deprecated. For many years, this has been the go-to API for apps and games requiring low latency audio and or portability. If you're using OpenSLES, you should migrate your code to use the OBO library. It's an open source library which is backward compatible to API 16. It's designed for high performance and ease of use. It uses the latest A-Audio API on devices that support it, falling back to OpenSLES on older devices. It's usually simple to migrate since OBO has a much simplified API and adding the dependency has been simplified in recent releases, so you no longer need to build Oboe from source. From version 1.3 onwards, the library is available from Google's Maven repository and can be added the same way you add a Jetpack library. You can open an audio stream in just a few lines of code, and the newest release, 1.42, sees the addition of streams creation via shared pointer to ease lifecycle handling. 
check out the full migration guide here. In Android 11, the Media Codec API has had some updates as well. You now have more control over allocating input and output buffers, allowing you to manage the memory associated with encoding and decoding more efficiently. There's also support for low latency decoding, which is particularly useful when streaming live content such as games and live broadcasts. So we've covered the new media controls, playback resumption, and seamless media transfer, as well as handling 5G networks and supporting the latest media APIs. For a full list of features in Android 11, check out the official release notes. And be sure to check out UAMP, the canonical code sample for music streaming and playback on Android. Thanks for watching.